Hey there and welcome to South Park. My name is Pete and today we complete South Park The Stick of Truth. Yes, we're doing this and this game is actually a completionist's wet dream, as it is possible to complete the entire storyline of the game and grab all available achievements in one single playthrough. And that is also exactly what I've planned for this series, a true 100% completionist playthrough of South Park The Stick of Truth. Now, for those of you who are a bit skeptical about this, I can understand that, but this game is so much more than just a comedy take on the role-playing genre, as there is a healthy amount of strategic planning required to actually beat this game in a completionist playthrough. Now, to spice things up a bit, we're also going to play on hardcore difficulty, so even though it might not look like it at first, we should be in for a fun strategic role-playing experience. In the end, though, keep in mind this is still South Park, and the humor in this game is crude to say the least. Still, let's not put the game off based on that alone. This game has received high praises for a reason, but enough with the ramblings, I would say let's get right to it. This is South Park The Stick of Truth, a 100% completionist playthrough. Deep in the lands of Zara, the humans of Koopa Keep struggle to stay alive as they are attacked by the wicked drow elves of Larnia. Darkness falls as the humans beg their king to save them, a noble king known only as the Grand Wizard. For a thousand years the battle has been waged, with only the bravery of the Grand Wizard to protect his human followers. But even though the Wizard King is so undeniably cool, the Drow Elf armies continue their attacks. They seek the human's most treasured relic, the Stick of Truth. But the tides of war soon change, as news of a new kid spreads throughout the land. In order to save the humans, the Grand Wizard must get to the new kid, before the Drow Elves can manipulate his man and use him to take the sacred relic from human hands. For whomever controls the stick, controls the universe. So, just like any good RPG, South Park The Stick of Truth starts out with character creation, and the first choice we have to make? Our skin tone. This won't really have any effect in games other than a few comments by Cartman and the skin color of her parents, so I decided to just go with the default. Hairstyle, once again, doesn't really matter except for aesthetics, and after a few minutes we won't see much of the hair anyway, so I simply chose something that looked fairly normal and then moved on. Up next is clothing, and there are a ton of outfits in the game, so once again we won't wear this for long, but since we're in South Park, we might as well go with the green South Park Cows t-shirt. Up next we have makeup, and this is actually a bit more important than you might think, as we want to select freckles here. This is important for an achievement later on, where it is required to beat a certain character in the game while wearing freckles, so we might as well equip them from the very beginning. They can also be found in the game world as items that can be equipped, but let's get this out of the way early so we don't have to worry about it later. Last but not least, eyewear. This is once again up to personal preference, but since we have the option to equip some glasses, we might as well do that. So, this is our protagonist. Doesn't really look that adventurous at the moment, but that will change in time. The journey is just about to begin. Well, I think that's everything. We did it, hun. We're really moved in. It's a new beginning for us. Things are finally going to be good. Do you really think it will be better for him? They won't look for him here. We just need to make sure he doesn't attract any attention. Come on, let's see how he's doing. Sweetie, hun, you all dressed? Hey, champ. How do you like your new room? I know it's a big change for all of us, but son, do you remember why we moved to this quiet little mountain town? He doesn't remember. He doesn't remember at all. That's good. That's good he doesn't remember. Uh, sweetie, we want you to have lots of fun here. Why don't you go out and make some friends? Right. Get outside and play, son. Like, like normal kids. We've got some money for you on the kitchen counter, sweetie. Just 
be back before it gets dark. Yeah, we love you too! Okay, first bit of gameplay here and we can start things off in good RPG fashion by looting the place. The chest in our room serves as storage whenever we have items we don't want to carry around with us, while we can find our first bit of cash inside the backpack hidden in the closet. And that's also all we can find in here, let's move on to the next room. The room right next to ours, which is our parents' bedroom, is locked at the moment, so the only other room left for us is the bathroom. Inside we will start things off by using the toilet, which can actually be used to uh, produce something. By rapidly tapping the S button we beat the minigame here, and that now allows us to loot the toilet. And this nugget here is more than just a funny little prop, it can actually be used in combat and there is an achievement for that. So we definitely want to grab that and also use it later on. For now though we can loot the remaining stuff inside of the bathroom and then leave again. Downstairs we want to head left first, which brings us into the kitchen, where we can find two kitchen cupboards to loot, the second one holding some eye black, the first cosmetic item we find in the game. Go on outside, sweetie. Our mother doesn't really have anything to say, so let's simply grab the money she placed for us and then make our way back towards the living room. Here we can find our father sitting on the couch, next to him a small end table that we also want to loot. Come on, son, get out there, make friends. Now here's the interesting thing, if we previously took too long in our room, the bathroom and the kitchen, then our father will immediately force us outside once we arrive in the living room. This also would not allow us to loot the end table, which is why time is a tiny bit crucial in these first few minutes. It wasn't a request, it was a command. Now get out there and make some friends. And yeah, this right here is exactly what I meant, he will force you out if you spend too long looking around. Will you go out and be a kid for Christ's sake? And as you can see, we cannot go back inside at this moment. Instead, let's bring up the quest journal, which shows our first and only quest, to go outside and find some kids to make friends with. Before we do that, however, our first point of interest is the garage, which we can open and go inside for some more hidden treasures. There are 14 of these garages in the entire game, some of them are of course locked, and opening them all will unlock another achievement, so this right here not only a chance to grab some cash, but also garage number 1 of 14. You shall die by my warhammer, Drow Elf! Uh-uh, I banish thee to the forest realm! That way I banish you first! Haha, <laughs> you can't hold out much longer! Help! Somebody! I can't hold out much longer! Help! Hey, no fair! That's cheating! I'm gonna tell my mom! Thanks, kid! I didn't realize he had a health potion! But my name is Butters the Merciful! I'm a paladin! I live right next door to you! We should be friends! Right, we just made our first friend in South Park in Butters. And yes, there is also an achievement for befriending everyone, in total 120 people, so it seems like we still have a long way to go. Now that we're friends, you should speak with the Wizard King. He's been talking about your arrival. The wizard lives this way, in the greenhouse, over there. Hey, where are you from? Where'd you live before moving here? You like Colorado? Why are you wearing your hair like that? All hail the Grand Wizard! So, you are the new kid. Your coming was foretold by Coldwell Banker. I am the Wizard King. But the time for talk is not now. Let me show you my kingdom. Who's your new friend, Eric? Shut up, Mom. Not now. Inside Cartman's house, the first thing we can do is loot the end table for evil Cartman's goatee, the garage key, and some cash. Then we can turn off the TV just because we can and talk to Cartman's mom. Don't talk to her. She's not part of the game. Welcome to the kingdom of Koopa Keep. Our weapon shop here is tended by Clyde, a level 14 warrior. Here you can see our massive stables, overseen by the level 9 ranger, Scott Malkinson, who has the power of diabetes. And here, of course, is the breathtaking and lovely Princess Kinney, the fairest maiden in all the kingdom. Don't ask why Kinney wanted to be a chick, it's just how he seems to be rolling right now. Right, welcome to Koopa Keep, and before we talk to Cartman, let's explore a bit. You may have heard of my deeds at the Battle of Stark's Pod. That's the line the Grand Wizard gave me. 
This by the way the first and only chance in the game to befriend Clyde, so make sure to do it here. My oil fate is as incurable as my diabetes. The power of diabetes is both a gift and a curse, but mostly a curse. The Grand Wizard would hold snacks if we talk off script. Stick to your lines. No talking, Scott. Be careful. The Rock of Insanity holds mysterious powers. Okay, you're insane now. If you want to be healed, you must gaze at the rock again. Okay, you're healed. Okay, you're insane now. Okay, you're healed. Ah, yes, the Pool of Vision. Beautiful, isn't it? Do not disturb the sacred waters. You're messing with powers you don't understand. And just like the shower back at our home, the Rock of Insanity and the Pool of Vision items that can be interacted with, but items that don't really do anything. Behold the distant realm of downtown, home of corrupt merchant lords and homeless people. Up next, we can talk to Kenny, who will give us a first small quest to complete. Right, since Kenny's not always that easy to understand, let's have a look at the quest journal, why the quest Flower for a Princess was added, prompting us to find a flower for Kenny. And that can easily be achieved by picking the flower over to the left here. This completes our very first quest in the game, you can see we earned this small amount of 5 experience points, and also $1 as a reward. The wizard's stump, perhaps one day I will show you what it does. Some say he who discovers the secret of the wizard's stump is the master of his own destiny. I figured it out the other day, pretty easy at least for me. Ah, you have located the training area, where our massive army learns to fight. As court paladin, my job is to deliver the Wizard King's justice and his mail. Now we've done everything we can in Cartman's backyard, so let's talk to him and proceed the storyline. You have been sought out, new kid, because humans everywhere are in great danger. I need something from you, and in return, I am prepared to allow you into my kingdom. I know you are very excited. It's time for your first quest, but first, please tell us thy name. Right, the naming process, essential to many role-playing games, and also tied to an achievement in this one. We will start out with Peach, but don't think for a second we'll be able to keep that. You entered Douchebag, is that correct? Now normally one would answer no here. However, for the acceptance achievement, it is very important that we agree with Cartman here and accept our fate. Are you sure you want to keep the name Douchebag? He is now asking us one more time, basically prodding us to say no, but we'll stand firm, go with yes one more time and unlock the first achievement of this playthrough. Very well, Douchebag. You will now choose a class. Fighter, mage, thief, or Jew. Right, four classes to choose from. Let's have Cartman introduce them. The fighter has courage, honor, and the ability to kick fucking ass. The fighter acts pretty much as a tank, able to not only deal but also take a lot of damage. A mage is like a wizard, only not as cool. The mage plays like most mages do, a bit fragile defensively, and able to deal damage less with their weaponry but more with their abilities. You look sneaky enough to be a thief. The Thief, a class with not necessarily the highest attack power, but more focused on damaging status effects like bleeding, for example. Jew, huh? So I guess we'll never really be friends. And lastly, the Jew. The lower his health drops, the stronger he becomes in fights, so the Jew is definitely a high-risk, high-reward class. And he's also the class we're going to choose, as there is an achievement in the game that can only be unlocked if we play as the Jew. Welcome to the KKK Douchebag the Jew, who probably can also handle our finances. Hooray! Now please, go and visit the weapon shop. Procure yourself a weapon and we shall teach you to fight. Right, our next task pretty straightforward. Let's buy a weapon from Clyde. Would you like to see my wares, weary traveler? Perhaps you would like to hear tips and rumors for two dollars? And just because we can, let's spend some money on tips and rumors. Don't waste your money on tips and rumors. Well, that certainly taught us a lesson. Let's continue with the purchase now. All of Clyde's inventory is locked for the moment except for one weapon, so for two dollars and thirty-four cents we will buy the Jewish Staff. But don't let it bother you that there's a game to be played. And the Jewish Staff here dealing more damage the more debuffs we receive from our enemies. Ah, a lovely purchase. And as you can see Clyde sells a bit more than just weapons, but again we can't buy anything at this point. We can now open the inventory to equip the Jewish staff as a weapon, and as a Jew we have a slot for both a ranged and a melee weapon. 
And let's actually also equip Evil Cartman's goatee, as there is, yes, another achievement related to this. We should, however, not equip the eye black, as that will override the freckles. And like I mentioned earlier, we need to have those on for another achievement. So I think with that we're well equipped. Up next we have a short combat tutorial. Ah, you have procured a weapon. Yes. It's now time to teach you how to fight. I want you to take your new weapon and, with the bravery of a noble knight, beat up Clyde. What? Kick Clyde's ass, new kid. What I do? I'm the king, Clyde, and the king wishes to be amused. Go on, new kid, kick his ass. I'm gonna kick your ass. Clyde, you have to wait your turn. That's lame. No, Clyde, it's like olden times. You have to wait your turn. Like in the Middle Ages, Clyde. I know it's lame, Clyde, but that's how we're fucking doing it. All right, douchebag, bash Clyde's face in. Don't be shy. Now, combat in this game seems rather straightforward at first, but it actually has quite a few tactical layers to it. Cartman does a good job explaining those over the next few minutes, so I will only interrupt occasionally. Oh, hell yeah, Clyde's your bitch! Alright, Clyde's wearing armor. In order to hurt him, I want you to hit Clyde as hard as you can. Here we learn how armor works in this game. One strong hit against it is better than multiple weak ones. Ah! Oh shit, dude, I think I see blood! Fucking nice, bruh. It's exactly what you do to guys with armor like that. Okay, listen up. The key to surviving in battle is not to get hit in the bows. Clyde, it's your turn to attack. Douchebag, protect your bows. Prepare yourself. Ugh. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Dude, you're already way better than Clyde. All right, it's time to use your heroic powers. Using your ability takes power points, or PP for short. <laughs> PP. <laughs> if you have a fucking better name for them, then fucking say it, Clyde. Fucking asshole. I'm the king, and I say it's PP. Douchebag, use your Jew ability to make Clyde pay for insulting the king. Ability is definitely important for the Jew, and they don't use the weapon we have equipped. Instead, they use points from the blue PP bar below our health meter. Ah! Way to wipe that smile off his stupid face, douchebag. Now do it one more time. Finish him! What? I was going easy. Take this! Ah! Very interesting here, maybe you've noticed that our PP bar went up from 6 to 8 because we got hit twice. That is a unique effect from the Holy Skull Cap we have equipped, restoring 1 PP every time we take damage. <laughs> Dude, that was awesome! You were all like, beam, and Clyde was all like, nah, nah. <laughs> okay, okay, you prove yourself worthy, douchebag. Now come inside the war tent and I shall let you see the relic. Right, our first experience with combat, certainly a successful one, so let's follow Cartman into the tent and continue. Well, here it is. The reason why humans and elves are locked in a never-ending war. The relic for which human and elf are willing to die. The Stick of Truth. Just two days ago, we took the stick back from the elves. Our kingdom was dying, but now it thrives. For whoever controls the stick controls the universe. Don't gaze at it too long! For its power is too much for mere mortals to look at. Now that you have seen the Stick of Truth, let's discuss your dues. Being a member of my kingdom costs $9.95 for the first week, $4 of which is tax deductible. Alarm! 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 Someone has sounded the alarm! 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 What is it? The elves are attacking! Oh my god! Defensive position! Right, the elves are attacking and we should probably help out, but before we do, let's get one last glimpse at the Stick of Truth and then smash a few of the things lying around, as when destroyed, those sometimes drop some loot. Douchebag, come help us! The chicken buckets will drop chicken bones and the stack of magazines here will drop some crumpled paper. One last look at the map here, that doesn't really tell us much though, so let's go outside and help out with the fight. Help us, new kid! Don't steal that man's shit in there! Man the gate! Don't let them through! Give us the stick, humans! Fuck you, Drow Elf! Come and get it! Clyde, guard the stick of truth while we defend the fortress! Aye, aye! Aye, aye! We're not playing pirates, Clyde! Douchebag, this is your chance to prove yourself. Hold off the asshole elves at all costs! Fuck you, asshole! Right, we now have to initiate combat with our opponents ourselves, which can simply be achieved by hitting them once with the Jewish staff. Do it, douchebag! Kick these elves' asses! Asshole! You're wounded, douchebag! Potions will heal you! Here! Now, Cartman introduces us to using items during combat, which is very useful for healing yourself and others, but also to buff up your own attacks. The rules say you can 
have one potion every turn. I asked for five, but this was a compromise. This guy's fast, douchebag. Try to block all his attacks. Kiss my ass! <laughs> okay, if you block all the attacks, you get a counterattack. Look at your enemy on the ground. Weak and helpless. Kick the shit out of him. Awesome, you kicked his helpless ass. Now finish off these elves in the name of the Wizard King. By the way, if you're wondering what those counters at the top of your screen are meant to be, those are the counters for the weapon proficiency and skill defender achievements. For weapon proficiency, we need to score 100 perfect hits on our enemies, and every time our weapon flashes and we press the attack button on time counts as a perfect attack. For skill defender, we simply need to block 100 attacks, so every time we hit the button in time and successfully block an attack will count towards that achievement. Right, we win the fight, earn one experience point and the first ranged weapon, the Bow of Sucking, and of course the fallen enemy also drops some loot, so let's help ourselves to that and then begin round number two. You got this, douchebag! What are you waiting for, douchebag? That guy's just standing there. Go kick his ass! In this fight, we are introduced to the stances of reposting and reflecting, but once again, Cartman does a more than serviceable job explaining what those are about, so I'll just let him do the talking. <laughs> oh man, he was totally waiting for you, dude. You can't just hit him like that. You need to try a different tactic to damage him. Look at that archer hiding behind his friend like a wood. Switch to your arrows, douchebag. Snipe that little bitch. Sweet, now you can hit the guy in the back. Go for the pink mist. You're not waiting on me, are you? Ah! Yeah, bitch, that's what you get for fucking with the Wizard King. Careful, douchebag. That guy's ready for your arrows now. You gotta try something else. And so, once again, we win another fight, now there is only one enemy left, and that would be the guy beating the cat here next to the watchtower. Let's do this, douchebag. In this fight, we are introduced to shields, but once again, Cartman explains it best. Okay, that guy has a shield. Shields are super weak, just hit them with your simplest hit over and over to wear them down quickly. Let his guard down. Now's your chance. Power attack his armor. Oh, motherfucker. That's it. Now finish him. Now. Stick of truth, the elves got it. That was your one goddamn job, Clyde! To guard the stick of fucking truth! Clyde, you are hereby banished from space and time! What? No, you can't do that. Yeah, I can! You're banished and lost in time and space! Yeah, go home, Clyde! You fought bravely on the battlefield, douchebag. Yeah, if you can make me a douchebag, but you sure can't fight! Shut up, Scott, nobody cares what you think. Anyways, we have a bigger problem now. The Stick of Truth has been stolen, and we must assemble our entire army in order to get it back. But our three best warriors still haven't reported for duty, my king. Our newest member can take care of that. Douchebag, I want you to go out into the neighborhood and find my greatest warriors, Token, Tweak, and Craig. I'm texting their pictures to your personal inventory device now. But beware. The lands outside are full of marauding drow elves, monsters, and sixth graders. Be sure you're well equipped. Now go, and send my warriors here. 
Butters, go with him. Alright, we defeated the elves and leveled up, but before we continue, let's also grab the loot from the last guy we defeated, as we had no chance to do that since the cutscene automatically started. Our new quest now is to find Craig, Token and Tweak and recruit them to Cartman's army to get the Stick of Truth back. With the level up, we have also earned ourselves an upgrade point, and we can now spend that to upgrade one of our abilities. Next to the Sling of David that we used in the tutorial, we also have the Jiu-Jitsu available, which is primarily used to stun enemies, but for the moment I would like to put the point in Sling of David, just to have a powerful damage-dealing attack available. We have now also unlocked our first fast travel flag, which as the name suggests allow fast travel through South Park, and if we now go into the menu and look under collectibles and quest, we can see that there are 12 of these fast travel flags scattered throughout South Park, and we also have the quest to go along with it. The Timmy Express demands that we find and unlock all the remaining 11. For this first episode though, I think this is a very good point to make the cut. The storyline is set, we have accustomed ourselves with the gameplay, so I would say we are ready to continue our completionist journey. As always, if you like this video then leave a thumbs up, and of course, if you want to support the channel and stay up to date on all the latest videos, then feel free to subscribe, and also let me know your questions and suggestions in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!